All right, everybody, welcome to class five, part two, glowing color and the luminous landscape 2024. All right, we are about to uh, do some glazing. Uh, first two paintings I'm going to do, I'm going to glaze with acrylics, just so you can see that it can be done. I've got, I've had so many acrylic painters throughout, you know, all my time teaching that just say, oh, you, you can only glaze with oils, you can't glaze with acrylics. Not true. The same rules apply with acrylic and oils. Basically, what you want to do is look at your tube of paint, and I'll go head over there so we can show you. What you want to do is look at your tubes of paint, um, and either on the back, if somewhere will tell you, uh, with the golden paints, there's a little square here. So when it's clear, can you guys see that little square? Yep. When it's clear, that means completely transparent. When it's half filled in, that means semi-transparent. Well, and then you can also look at the top there, and it shows how much it shows through when it shows the color. Yeah, just like I do with my tests where I use a permanent marker and then paint. Yeah, paint. and they hand paint that. Very nice. That's so what I hear anyway. Well, it looks like it and feels like it. Yep. So the golden paints are great. Um, this is a Lucas, a tube of Lucas, and you can see that the uh, titanium white, this their square is completely full. Um, if I look on some of the cheaper brands I have, okay, on the on these uh, Utrecht brand, I just look on the back and it says okay over here. So uh, what I want to do when glazing, as a general rule, I want transparent, ideally or I want semi-transparent. The uh, thing is, is if you mix enough medium or, you know, thinner with it, water or whatever, I'm gonna be using a combination of airbrush, 50% airbrush medium and 50% matte medium, which is a combination I've kind of come up on my own um, just because the uh, pure airbrush medium as a medium is, a little shiny, so a 50-50 mix with the matte medium. It's a really good bond. It thins the paint well, and it's not too, too shiny. Um, I'm probably not going to be showing you uh, my palette too much, um, but when I get to oils, I'll be showing you the palette uh, because I want to show you the paintings. So I think we'll start with this guy on the left. And if you remember uh, when we were doing the um, complementary colors, that was a landscape I did that was a bright kind of pinky yellow sky with the blue green ground and trees. Um, it was nice, it was colorful, but you know, just not my style. So I don't mind painting over it. Um, but everything was a little too dark this morning when I woke up and was thinking, you know, okay, I can just glaze into this. So what I did was I just went back in with white paint and I just lightened areas. Uh, are you guys able to see that? I added some light onto the tops of the grasses. I added some light into the water. And then I put a, quite a bit of light into the sky, leaving a little bit of um, a little bit of cloud showing. Is that an okay angle for everybody? Michael, I think if you made it so that we weren't all in the picture, it's you're very small. You're just one little block. No, all that's right. your setting, I think. Really? Yeah. What do I have to do? Upper right view. Okay, I got it. Well, it changed when quick I didn't do speak, anything. Quick speaker and make sure you pin Michael. No, I'm I, now it's right. I didn't do anything. Thank you. Part time. <laughs> Okay, so you guys can see that a little more clearly where I've added the white in and everything. So I basically, I you know, retained some of the values, some of the darks, and uh, I just kind of went over the top of it with white paint, which looks kind of hideous right now. But knowing that when I glaze, any of the lighter areas are gonna show the glaze a little purer. Here's a quick note that you guys should write down. Whenever you glaze, even if it's like a bright yellow, 
it's going to get a little bit darker. So when I know I'm going to be doing glazing into a painting, I will make it a touch lighter. And a lot of times, in fact, the painting that we're going to be finishing on today, um, I actually just left the entire sky white, knowing that I'm going to be able to create a gradation of colors just using transparent color. So yeah, the big note is no matter what, when you glaze, it's going to get darker. So if you start with a dark underpainting, you're going to be getting into a world of hurt very quickly. All right. So what I was kind of thinking I would like to do is do a wash of Indian yellow basically over this. It's going to make it a lot, lot warmer. It's going to make a lot of the blues a little bit greener. So, you know, you just kind of think what's going to happen with the colors that I'm going over. So, you know, anything that's blue, of course, putting yellow on top will go greener. Uh, the reds will go oranger. And then the white, of course, will pick up the glaze as intended. So I'm going to, I poured my uh, medium, which is again, just a little bit of airbrush medium and uh, matte medium mixed. I'm just going to dip into that, put it down on my palette, make a little pile of it. And I'm going to dip into my Indian yellow. I'm going to, I put out a couple different ones to experiment with. I'm reaching into um, my more warmish one here. Um, and then I have one that's a little more earthy over here, a little, little bit browner looking. So are you guys ready? Here we go. What? Wow. <laughs> but you see how the background still shows through? Yeah. And I can make it thicker even though I'm using opaque color by simply putting it on thicker. I can make it thinner by adding more medium or by simply scrubbing into it a little harder, which is actually kind of one of my preferred ways of doing a lot of glazing when I'm using transparent colors. Is I will simply just scrub it. I forgot this one's not fairly in there. Let's see if I can make it grab a little better. So, Michael, you will be able to wipe that one down a little? Uh, for about a minute or two, because it's acrylics. Okay. If it were oils, which I'll show you in a little bit, I have a lot more work time. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Your minute's up. Uh-oh. I know. But I do have a mister bottle here. So let's spray it down so it gives me a little more work time. But look how the whites are popping, bright yellow. Yeah, and you can see how it harmonizes everything, whether or not you know we're happy with the colors, which I don't think we are. I'm just going to go ahead and grab a bigger brush so that I can smooth that out a little bit and then I'm going to start doing a tiny bit of wiping away because I don't want my trees to look like this. I don't want my darks to look so bright. Go ahead and mist it again. I didn't use my little break properly because I should have changed this, the grips on this to be different. Um, I'm just going to grab a paper towel. That's all. And I'm going to get in there and remove from the darks because the darks look silly. I'm just going to get some of that out of there. Can you move your camera up when you get a chance? For that, yeah.
all of the landscape parts, I can kind of diminish that a little bit. I can get into these clouds a little bit and bring them back a little. So that's what I like about these transparent colors. And people, you know, talk constantly again, students in the past that I've had, where I show them the wiping away or getting back in, you know, glazing and then removing, glazing again, uh, you know, and just say, oh, I can't do it with acrylics. You can, you just gotta be a little faster. It's a pretty big change from what we just saw a second ago. All right, starting to dry already. I'm just going to hit it again with a little mist. Cool down some of these colors a little bit. And the great thing about acrylics versus oils is I can come back immediately almost and add another color. I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, a trans a semi-transparent burn umber. umber. I'm going to mix it with a touch of blue. So here I got a little bit of a uh, transparent burnt umber, a little bit of a blue, which I have no idea it is a transparent okay. blue. That's great. I'm just going to mix that in, mix that in, makes kind of a nice dark. I could make it even lean towards the reds a little more if I want in some areas. And I'm going to use that into uh, a little too, too warm. So I'm going to mix a little more blue. There we go. And so now I'm creating some transparent darks, which a lot of people don't use, but you can do some interesting things with transparent darks, getting in and adding a little bit of a richness into some of the shadows. Dioxazine purple works well for that. Oh, for would, yeah. Sneaking in underneath things. Yeah, for sure. I do not have that color in acrylics. What's it called? Dioxazine purple. D-I-O-X-A-Z-I-N-E, I think it is. I love that color. Yeah. I don't know why. I love, it's hard probably to see on the um, on the monitor, but transparent darks are so nice when you are seeing original painting up close and all of a sudden you see into the shadows all this variation and interest. Um, I just really like that. Uh, I think it's underutilized in oil painting. I think a lot of times darks are just dark and matte and uh, kind of lose a lot of their potential. And was the yellow that you used, was that it? Oh, no, wait, that's the way I got it. Transparent, no. It was a transparent yellow, yeah. Indian yellow. Thank you. Problem. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of red and the truth is these are super cheap colors that I'm just using that are leftovers from my daughter. I, for one, they're covered in paint. Um, so I have no idea if they're opaque or transparent. Um, because they're so cheap, I find that the cheaper colors are generally a little more transparent. Adding a little medium, and I'm just going to use this to create a little band of kind of warms along and create some kind of a transition between those warm uh, yellows down into the cooler areas. So it's going from, and that first glaze of the yellow is not fully dry. I'm kind of rushing through this so I'm moving some of that paint but uh hopefully creating a little bit of a sense of depth a little bit of a sense of uh warmth as that light kind of rakes across these trees and the grasses back here I can 
That's nice. Yes. A little bit thicker, mm -hmm. still transparent, kind of on the edge of this tree. I'm not, uh, I'm using it a little bit thicker because I want it to kind of show up as a semi-transparent, not as a full transparent. And it'll hopefully look like, you know, you're looking kind of towards the light and it's uh, affecting, kind of has that little almost lens flare kind of feel to it. I can use some of those reds to delineate where the uh, edges of these trees maybe come forward or I'm catching some of the light, but not as strong as towards the top. And it's just great for making these little subtle transitions. Let's warm up some of those grasses. I'm gonna mix some of that red with some of that yellow, but I'm gonna leave it, I'm not gonna mix a bunch of medium with it this time. But I'm going to put it on thinly and hopefully we'll warm up a little more yellow. Just want to warm up some of these grasses that I put in later. Putting it on a little heavy handed there. And let's just grab a, a brush that is clean and not buried under all my tubes of paint. Just warming up. Hopefully it feels like the light's kind of behind this tree a little bit and kind of coming through, hitting this valley or this little field. Got a little too warm this far over, so I can simply just add a little water and probably while it's wet, get that back to the cools that are underneath. I like it too because it's a quick way when working with the acrylics to add texture and build up my paint a little bit if I want to leave it a little thicker. I'm going to show you two quick things here. I'm going to put the um, Indian yellow back on top here, but I'm going to put it thicker. So it's a very, very transparent paint, but I've loaded it up and now I'm going to cover my clouds. So I'm making them way warmer, way more Indian yellowy, orangey yellow. So that's the same color that I put on here, but you can see if I put it on thick, how different of a color that is, right? Yeah. So experiment when you're playing with your transparent colors, of what is the difference between the thick versus the thin version of it, right? That's way too hot. It looks crazy. So I will, you know, remove a lot of it. Feel free to experiment and learn about how do these colors look when they're thick, when they're thin, when they're mixed with medium. Let's put a little bit of transparent red under those clouds, and we're going to blend that into those other transparent, those uh, Indian yellow kind of orangey color. Want to make it feel like the sun's coming from behind that tree a little bit more. 
So I'm going to go ahead and remove a little more. So I'm making it a little more transparent in that area. Isn't that interesting how all of a sudden it just feels so much brighter, so much lighter? Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Let's cool down the far side. I'm going to mix kind of a purple color. I'm not mixing any white in any of this. I could, but then it starts to have, because of the white is opaque, I'm going to start to get coverage of the layers underneath. So unless you have a specifically kind of a transparent white, but what I'm doing is I'm letting that white underneath do a lot of the lightening for me. And because these paints are so transparent, again, what it's doing is it's going through the paint to that white that I put on there earlier and bouncing back out and it's, such a great tool for creating a sense of glow. And you can see how by kind of adding these colors all over, there's a bit of harmony. I can keep going into this. You know, I could cool all these down with blues and everything else. So a, a big part of what I want you to see is that when you glaze, well, let's just do the next painting real quick. Could I could I ask real quickly? Would you in for the sky holes in the trees on the right? Uh -huh. would, would you use like a Q-tip or a brush? Or yeah, but I don't want them nearly as bright as the big sky area. Right. So a how do you do that? Needs the okay. orange behind it, I think, or yeah. red, whatever color. Put in there. Yeah, I mean it's pretty dry there, but. I'm not too worried because it still looks like sky holes. Uh -huh. And it's quite a lot darker than this area. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, generally I want my sky holes to be darker than the brightest brights around them. But I did pick up a Q-tip, so now I got to use it. <laughs> If you need a transparent white in acrylic, it's, it's zinc white, Z-I-N-C, zinc white. I know that that's not something you use a lot of in oils, but that's the transparent white that yeah, I use. There are uh, transparent whites that you can buy as well. Um, and again, when you mix it with medium, but just be aware that when you mix, like if I was trying to... Um, make my yellows lighter or my reds and purple like the purpley color that i mixed up here lighter whenever i add white even if it is zinc white it's going to also get cooler yes so be aware of that when you're trying to retain the warmth of a thing a lot of times transparency is kind of like one of your best friends okay all right. um, are you going to start with oils now? Uh, I'm going to do one more acrylic on this Oh, one. because I just wanted to tell people that um, if they don't have your stuff to mix, this is called gloss glazing liquid. And you just put a little little bit out on your palette, and I just pick it up with, with my brush before I, I get into the paint. And it works, it's basically the same thing, but yeah, you don't have to mix it. I appreciate that. Yeah, and, and I was just using just airbrush medium. And the reason I was using it is because it's literally the same uh, density as water almost, mm -hmm. but it was making it quite shiny. Um, and so I found, yeah, just a half, and you can use matte medium as well as a mixing medium. So. Mm -hmm. 
But acrylics have definitely a benefit over oils. And if you've ever been to an art store, you've seen this. They have whole walls of mediums with impasto, you know, with thickening paste. With, you can add glitter into it. I mean, all sorts of things that acrylics can do. Um, but yeah, I, I found that because I was kind of used to mixing water into my paint to kind of thin it with the acrylics, that the airbrush medium seemed to work really well. Um, okay. All right, so I'm thinking let's do the opposite here. We just made a uber bright sunrise painting. Let's make a nocturne kind of feeling out of this one. What do you guys think? Yeah, interesting. Uh, I, have no idea. I don't know, though. It's got some nice glow going in those trees. I know. I love the glow back there. <laughs> you can make it a moon, though, if you're going to do Nocturne. Oh, what's that? You could put a moon in there. You like yeah, the glow. The painting we did before. Mm -hmm. I think it will be interesting to see how something so sunny can turn into a Nocturne. Let's see. I have no idea. I'm interested in that in what colors are going to be used. Yeah, right now. I never did that. What I'm using right now is something as simply called primary blue. I'm going to go ahead and mix a tiny bit of black into it, maybe a tiny bit of red into it. Try to make a bigger pile. Put some medium in it. So basically, I just grabbed from this blue pile, a little bit from this black pile, a little bit from this red pile, mix some medium. I hope I have enough medium or enough paint here to cover it. We will see in a sec. Maybe what I'll and do you're, is you're still doing You're still doing acrylic? Yep, I'm on acrylic right now, and then I will do a full switch over to uh, oils. Yeah, I want to keep this wet for a second. Maybe it's more dusk. What a transformation. Oh. The joys of having paintings she's not quite in love with. It's you beautiful. aren't in love with that one? That is beautiful. Oh, thanks. I know it's even for sale on my website. Whoops. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, that one's sold. This one is, is next. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Dark twin brother. That's it. So I've got a lot of brush marks on there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a soft brush and kind of brush that out. Oops, picking up the droplets of that Mr. Bottle. Sorry, sorry, night all of a sudden. I'm not sure I love it. Kind of weird. Need some pinks and peaches. I, exactly what I would <laughs> want to do. So let's see if I spray it down again. Is 
just kind of trying to visualize it for a second there. Now that looks like clouds. Yep. It's beautiful. And again, this is not the end all be all of the painting. A lot of times I can kind of get in and do some of this and then come back in with my opaque paint and really kind of refine areas that I want. I can even out transitions. I can do so many things. So that's why I personally like the ability to combine darks, I mean, transparents and opaques. Is Lashley here today? You're painting with your fingers. <laughs> I think this could be, I was a little bit, oh, I'm still scared. I'm always scared. And I don't mean scared. I mean, excited. Um, I uh, almost wiped it all back down, but maybe there's something here. That we can do with adding letting this dry for just a little bit. Was the underpainting acrylic also? Uh, yeah, I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was just checking. <laughs> yeah, I sure hope so. Is this how you visualized it when you, before you decided what color to put on here? Nope. It was going to be a sunny, hot summer day, but uh, I didn't like it. I just wasn't happy with the textures. I wasn't happy with the colors. So I just decided literally this morning as I was thinking about this class, what paintings can I glaze into that are laying around here? It's almost like the, uh, you know, when you're looking around for one of your kids to help you do the dishes or clean the kitchen and it's the last little sucker that just didn't run outside fast enough. He's like, oh, you buddy, you're the one that's helping me explore possibilities and glazing. But again, I still got the value and design structure. So if I make an absolute mess, I still got all of it. I can just paint over it with oils. I want you guys to realize how much freedom you have like with oils that, you know, it might not be going the right direction, but you can just set it aside, pick up another painting. I'm just picking up a little bit of a kind of a pinkish color now. In an ideal world, I would have let that layer dry a little better. And I definitely should have let it dry because now I'm, I just reactivated the color underneath it, which is not great. 
So do even with acrylics, I've got to be a little more patient, which is a lot easier when I'm not trying to impress all my friends and bore them with dead air. All right, let's try something. Don't love it. Let's go ahead and see if we can't remove as much as possible. I'm just gonna hit it with a heavy misting. Hopefully reactivating. Kind of like the little bits of blue now up there. But now I want that to dry more, but I can now, it's almost like I just started over. So now I could come back in with a different color to experiment or maybe make it a more, a darker color. If you were going to make it darker, what would you do? Uh, maybe even try black. Let's try it. I have a tube Can you left. move the easel down just a hint? Sure. Let's just see what happens. I've never even thought of trying just black. Let's just see. Too far. Black scares me. <laughs> I've reactivated the white paint that I put on this morning. So it's going to be uh, slowly revealing itself. I wonder if I should just stop, but uh, whatever. Oh, don't mess it up. What shade of black is this? I think it's called deep black. Which I imagine is a pretty opaque color. It doesn't look opaque. It I'm looks blue. Bit to it, yeah. Quite a bit of the medium that I made. All that I would be really be doing probably now is really kind of darkening my shadows, creating a stronger transition. So yeah, all it did was feel like we put sunglasses on. I'm just trying to make it so it's not so stripey with the brush strokes. I'm just taking a soft brush. Didn't really add any paint or anything. I'm just kind of hopefully getting rid of some of those striations in the paint. All right, let's see what happens if we somewhat thoughtfully move, remove some of that paint. Now it looks like there's a moon. <laughs> Far more dramatic. Oh. 
storm brewing, your tornado coming. Go. Sorry, San Diego. Yeah, this is not dark enough. Like I would have to come in and, you know, establish these tree shapes and stuff. I think, or at least create a color, some kind of a stronger transition. But anyways, it's just interesting to just experiment and just see what, you know, again, a painting I'm not in love with. I'm willing to uh, sacrifice it or experiment with it. but still don't feel like it's working. So I'm just gonna wipe that all off again. And because I've re-activated um, all the paint, I'm just gonna go ahead and let this one sit. But I think you guys could see how I can change values, I can change temperatures. Uh, it's always gonna get darker. I mean, especially if you have blue or black. Um, yeah, and I hope you guys are okay with the fact that I just kind of experiment in front of you guys. I oh, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. wonderful. It's very interesting. Kill my painting so you don't have to kill yours. Better you than me. <laughs> we right. But I still have a... You know, I still have my design. I still have my structure. It's just slightly tinted. <laughs> oh, wow. It's really going back to. Uh... Yeah, even with all those different colors, the, the light was still shining through the trees. It's pretty amazing. I think I agree with Michelle. It's still amazing. Now come back over in oils and wow us at a later date. I actually kind of like it better than before because there's a little bit of this kind of cool along the top, very subtle, but yeah, just. Mm -hmm. All right. Fun, fun, thought, fun. Whatever uh, you did to it, even the black on it, I thought was really amazing. Thank you. Yeah, and it was fun and it was a good experiment. I'm glad I did it. And um, but you can see where the uh, paint on the white is reactivated because I've put so much water on top of it. I mm -hmm. only did it this morning. So it's, uh, you know, the one on the left and the one on the right, I painted them both this morning with the white. But because I didn't go over and over and over it, the one on the left is more sound, whereas the one on the right, you can literally see the paint uh, being removed from the background. Um, and the right. truth is, as I think about it, I'm not positive I didn't paint some of that in oil. So I may have to just wipe all of that off here after class, scrub it down or sand it down. Um, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and take another five minute break and I'm going to change over to the oils and I'm yes. going to show you uh, spot glazing where I just literally glaze into one small area. Again, using one of the uh, paintings from previous. And then um, we're going to uh, glaze into a large format. So hopefully we can get all that done in time to do uh, our critique. Keep you guys too late. So give me five. Uh, we'll come back at 1135. Okay.